And this one's Sakara. We're so excited about our new sponsor, Sakara. It's the ultimate hot girl food. It's nutritionally designed, chef crafted breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they're made with powerful, plant rich ingredients. You can uh, Sakara's offering our listeners twenty percent off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash trash Tuesday or enter the code trash Tuesday at checkout. That's S A K A R A dot com slash trash Tuesday for twenty percent off your first order. Truebill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. Because companies make subscriptions so hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. You guys don't fall for subscription scams. <laughs> Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. Go right now, Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. It could save you thousands a year. You guys, Nutrafol is vitamins for your hair. Simple as that. It supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting five root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. Imagine having all of those problems right here in your very fun job. <laughs> we love Nutrafol and you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash trash and save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it is only available to you as customers for a limited time. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. And symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, attachment fatigue, and more. So That's many things Kalila. that we literally talk about on this episode. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Trash Tuesday listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. I am doing stand-up dates. Check them out, estheronice.com. I know I'm coming to Austin and DC and I'm adding more estheronice.com for tickets. Hey guys, I'm so excited. I'm going back to Flappers and Burbank. It's gonna be one show. We're gonna pack it out, sell it out. I'm gonna bring all of my friends. It's gonna be so absolutely amazing and fun. Last time was incredible. I cannot freaking wait. Draw on your abs, get yourselves ready. Come see me. You never know what's going to happen. Things got crazy this last weekend. I've had so much fun. I can't wait to see more of you. I'm also going to be uh, next weekend, the following weekend, after this weekend, the 24th through the 25th, I will be in West Nyack, New York. I cannot wait to go. The flight was so expensive. Please show up. <laughs> I, I literally can't believe it. It was amazing. Uh, and then I'm taking July off, but then you can see me um, again in Austin, Texas, Springfield, Missouri, Homestead, PA, Pittsburgh Improv, Tempe, Arizona, Calusa, California, Casino, um, Kansas City, Missouri. There's a lot of dates. Uh, go to my website, annieletterman.com slash shows. There's many more. I can't wait to see you. It's more fun than I can even express to you. Esther, you look like you um, borrowed your babysitter swimsuit to be here today. <laughs> It was a guy. <laughs> I just want to say that Annie, when the moment you walked in today, things changed for me. <laughs> well, hold, hold on. I <laughs> and Kalila, <laughs> you will, away. you're, you will always be my number one. You'll always be my first. Oh, thank you. But Annie, today, wow, wow, we wow. I'll be your last. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have sex. And I'm gonna choke you too hard. You're not gonna make it. Pamela. You're here. I did. Can you see my eyebrows on camera? I tried to thin out my eyebrows. Can you tell? Uh, yes. <laughs> Carlos, let's see yours. Yes. Oh, wow. -a -wee. Has the best Give us like a run so we can slow, slow it down. Just like run from here. Yeah, there. like David Hasselhoff. We'll slow it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's our intro. Like, Carla, it's so weird that a guy has the body that I want to have myself. You're like, getting there. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> you guys, welcome to the Baywatch episode. Is this what this is? Each pound yeah. you lose in those tits, you're getting closer to Carlos. <laughs> 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 Esther was like a triple E before. <laughs> I have to admit that I have never seen Baywatch. And it was your idea to do it. Yeah, because I will. So Esther. That's so <laughs> Esther. <laughs> but obviously, we all know the iconic looks. I'm just like hungry for you today. I wish that you saw Baywatch because it was epic. Did you used to watch it? I yeah, I watched it. That seems like what like the only show that the Philippines got. Well, that and Rescue Nine One One. Oh, Rescue Nine One One. You remember that? Yeah. And it the was Gary all reenactments, right? Yeah, and the Gary Shandling show. There's okay, a and Wimbledon. Wimbledon was a show. No, no, like oh, tennis. the actual. Wimbledon. Yeah, they, we got all the Grand Slams in the Philippines. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pride Month. 
It is. Happy oh, yeah, pri- congratulations. Happy Pride to you, <laughs> Esther. And, oh, thank yeah. you. Carlos, yeah. have you been getting extra shout outs this month? No, not more than usual. <laughs> People love you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy in the audience. Uh, I was in um, St. Louis. I had so much fun. There was a guy in the audience who was with a girl, and he, but he had a little bit of a Carlos vibe. <laughs> So, but I didn't want to say anything, you know? And then eventually he was like, I'm gay, girl. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't want to like, I saved that for Carlos. <laughs> and everyone erupted into laughter. I said how Carlos was like, I'm not gay. I'm, and everyone No, laughed. I'm glad that it- I Everybody, I just want you to know like the world's with you. Thank you, I, I helped with a laugh too. And then I signed this girl has, didn't have knuckles. She was born without knuckles. Cause I always ask people if they have any deformities they'd like me to sign. Yeah. So she had missing knuckles and I drew little hearts. And on one of them I wrote, Carlos needs a haircut. I saw that. Oh, I that's reposted. so funny. Uh, yeah, I saw that on, the, <laughs> on our Instagram. That is really Bring cute. me your nubs. <laughs> okay, so Esther, you never watched Baywatch. No. What do I need to know? There are a few characters that were yes. iconic, which is obviously Pammy. Yes. Yes, Pamela, whose name was... Uh, I watched her like later show. CJ. 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 I wasn't going to CJ, then David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff's son, uh, who is that guy, Jeremy Jackson, he, Hobie. Um, then there was Yasmin Bleeth. Yasmin Bleeth was on it. Um, um, Nicole Egger. N- yeah, Nicole Egger. Who was famous? At, did you watch uh, Charles in Charge? She was the hottie on no. Charles in Charge. Yeah. I okay. know everyone was about CJ, but I really thought um, Nicole Egger was it for me. Oh, she was my favorite. Yeah. 100%. She was so hot. And then I'm the Stephanie of the group. Yeah, Stephanie. We're actually technically Stephanie's, but we've really squished it together. Stephanie was just a random. Athletic, short-haired. Short-haired. There, Wait, was look Jason up Stephanie. Momoa on Baywatch? He was. Jason Momoa was on Baywatch. As the yeah. last, like, oh, not okay. in the early years, right? Mm-hmm. How many seasons did it have? It's, and my Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra was Later on, on as well. Wait, I can't look remember. Look at Jason Momoa. Oh shit. He's so cute. This is crazy. Wait, I don't know if I've told you guys this on the show before, but so you know how Dave used to like work in late night TV, which is so oh, but on the Carson Daly show? Yes. Yeah. So random. Did it three times. You'd never know. <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred times. He told me that one time he heard from one of the late night producers, like high up, like Letterman, all the like just like knew about all the shows that the only guests who ever moved the needle ratings wise were two people. Pam Anderson and Carmen Electra. Of course, that makes sense. So when those bitches were on, they got more viewers. And like, so that hot, being hot is all that matters. <laughs> I mean, really, when you think about it, like Jenny McCarthy's crushing it still. And she's probably the one that's still the hottest. Was like, she on Baywatch? She wasn't, but she was, Carmen Electra was on um, Singled Out too. So that's why I went mm. to her. She was on Singled Out, but she, but they were like. I love the Jenny McCarthy show. I guess TV. Carmen Electra actually came out with an OnlyFans recently. Oh, Carlos, will you sign up for it? I, I will. It's fine. <laughs> will you beard sign up for Carmen Electra's? You know who we had on our on Tiger Belly was um, um, Dave Navarro. Oh yeah. And they used to be just they were married. Me. Yeah, well, they were married for a minute, and yeah. I think like Bobby show. went to their like co bachelor. I think like wow. back in the day when it was still B- when it was a Bobby's show on been. VH1. It was on. I think it was on MTV. A- MTV or, or VH1. I watched it. Me too. They had a bachelor bachelorette party. Uh-huh. I remember they like invented that. But Dave, Bobby Lee was there. Yeah, he's well. He's friends with Dave. They've been friends forever, apparently. Um, and I was, you know, um, in high school, just getting fisted by the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors, brothers. <laughs> wow. Teachers. <laughs> oh wait, so many of these people ended up getting so much attention that they ended up becoming like drug addicts and having to go to. Then they're probably on celebrity rehab and stuff too. So weird to get this type of famous. Like Pamela Anderson, that thing coming out must have been a fucking nightmare for her. That what thing? The pa- the sex tape. The, well, obviously the sex tape, but then when they just redid it on FX. Oh just, no, it was. Oh, yeah. She like, like spoke out against it. Like she didn't. They, they didn't, shouldn't have done it. Neither Pam or Tommy wanted that. It's so crazy. I know. I I saw Britney being like triggered online. Britney Furlan a little bit, but well, wh- who wouldn't? You know. I know. I like, always like, think about her during uh, that. I, yeah, I honestly so like. I feel for her. Like everyone is just again revisiting people that didn't even know what happened. Right. right. N- no one needs to go through that emotional turmoil. Like yeah, for if, our entertainment. Yeah. And if you're not making money off of it, that's way worse. The too. rule is post mortem, right? Like when um, everyone has passed, you can do that. But for for regular people to like interpret okay. your story and put a spin, their spin on it, and then people consume it and say, "Hey, this must have been the truth." Even if you put a disclaimer like, hey, guys, this is, you know, not accurate. People are still going to be, no one reads the disclaimer. Yeah. 
That is so messed up. Well, I have a question. What would you, would you rather be dead and forgotten or would you rather something like that people liked about you but you didn't like about yourself be brought up after you were dead? I have no opinion. I don't care. Dead and forgotten. Uh, There's something so poetic about just going back into the soil mm. and being nothing and everything. Yeah. Like that is that's the ultimate approach. for me. That's good. Yeah. That's I healthy. think it's beautiful to just. <laughs> I think my answer is better. I have no, I don't care. Why but, are you being yeah. competitive when you're in the, the <laughs> ugliest of all of the <laughs> swimsuits today? Really? <laughs> of all the days to try to compete with her? She looks so much better in her swimsuit Mama, than you. No, I don't. Mama. Guys, I brought a skims because I just had a feeling because how were we going to know if these were going to fit us right? Right, and so a saggy a swimsuit is not okay for me. You guys, we didn't get to choose the swimsuits. Um, they were given to us by production. And production so. couldn't know. Listen, I'll defend production yes. for once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was watching your TikTok because you're the only one I follow. <laughs> I'm just getting on TikTok, guys. By the way, fucking follow me. It's so embarrassing. Um, but you met Tyra Banks. Yes. So I... Um, Ugh, I give up. I can't be as hot as you guys. Forget it. It's okay. There has to be a Jewish person on and represent. It's just more like how dirty your hair is. Like there's so many other things that are. I fucking about you. put oil in it to look like I was at the beach, and it just <laughs> looks like I didn't shower. Okay, we all have different tactics. Esther, to be you're hot. meant to have people to pay people to take care of you. Thank you know that. You. Yes. This really is like another example of that. You should have had hair and makeup wardrobe for this. This was your idea, Esther. Or you could have just showered and come in with wet hair. All right, let me tell you about She's Tyra. She's never going to shower. <laughs> Putting oil in her hair is way more realistic. So a couple of years ago, I was at an event and Tyra Banks was there. And I was like, she's just standing right there and she could potentially be the key to unlock like me being hotter. And I was like, mm. I just have to take the risk of asking. And so I went up to her and I was like, hey, like... <laughs> how can I be hotter in photos? Like you seem like this you is would the know. I love. And she, she I, like thinking that she might just be like weirded out. Who knows? Got to take the risk. She looks at me. She goes, let me see your phone. I'm like, here you go. She's like, let me see pictures of you. Show me pictures of you. She's looking through all of them. She goes, okay, relax your jaw. I'm like what? She's like, and then we take a photo and I just go like this, like, and it's the best photo I've ever taken. <laughs> it's a, it looks Tongue so Tongue in the good. roof of the mouth. I think I just... My mom's Korean You mother. are corpse hot. So anything you can do to look a little corpsier. <laughs> it's because for me, like, I, I need to add more jaw because I have, like, less jaw. But do you think she was saying that specifically to you? Yes. Like, you are a contestant on America's Top Model? Yes. Or was, was she saying it to, like, that's what everyone should do? She was giving me specific tailored advice, but it's for what, my face. How would you feel if you found out she had said that to, like, every other person? Would that hurt? Uh... It worked for me, so that's fine. Okay, so you know what I've deduced from this situation what? is that the role I play in your life when I'm there is I'm the one you push in to talk to the person for you. Exactly. I'm like the buffer in between. So if there is a rejection, I take that. But if there's a a go ahead, then you can come in. Yes, okay. like we're we're. <laughs> this is why I always say like we're good wing women for any situation yeah. for each other for you. I need I need that. Yeah, because I'm the quiet mouse who's going to be like. You know, I'm never, I would never, never dare ask. But that Tyra makes Banks, you but look cool though. But that makes you look cool because you don't read like a mouse in any way. So you're just so hot that you're yeah. in the corner, like not saying something looks like you're like the best. Thanks, Annie. I'm really that's just true. like, you know, No, I know, but suffering. that's even better. But, but that's even better. <laughs> so you suffering, there's like a pain, in, but it's kind of making you like, like you're thinking lift. you're like, you're like, I was Melissa. Or you're like, my shoulders are big. And you kind of do like the model hunch. Yeah. It just well, makes you a couple high. of my coworkers at Abercrombie um, were on America's Next Top Model. And one of them actually won. Her name is Salisha. And Can you pull her up? Salisha. She's beautiful. But, Salisha? Yeah. And I had a friend who was, I was a little bit closer to her name was Meg. Um, but everyone at Abercrombie was either, an, you know, this, everyone in LA basically. But Abercrombie, especially, they were always in that reality show Next. Remember that? Yes. Or... Craig Conant was on that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone from my work was always on an episode of Next. That's so Let's put funny. it that way. That is like when I was a fucking loser eating cookie dough watching TRL after school, I would have dreamed to know someone on Next. <laughs> really? That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. So she won that. Uh, Remember the time. fifth wheel? That was a good reality yes, show. Yes, that, that one. Was, was really that on fun. like? 
for us, it was like Channel 13. What was that, Fox or something mm -hmm. like that? I think it was Fox. Yeah, mine was 29. But yeah. I can't remember what the storyline was. They just put five people in and then two people paired up and then one person lost, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But what I did you so. win in these? Nothing. You didn't win anything. Yeah, because I think Craig Conant said he made like 15 bucks or something. What? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what we get paid for a set at the comedy store. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to 20 now, bitch. <laughs> she doesn't even pick her checks up. <laughs> Do you ever do that? How fun that... That was like a goal in my life was to not need my comedy store checks. Because I remember Bobby would come in and they would hand him like a stack that's probably like right. $10,000 worth. And he just didn't give a shit at all. And um, that's when he first told me, when I first was in the office with him and I was like, Oh my God, you have that many checks? He goes, yeah. He goes, you need your comedy store checks? I, yeah. I'm i going to um, yeah. expose him. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. He doesn't do that because he simply is too lazy to mail, him, mail mm -hmm. it to his accountant. So for the past 10 years, all of his checks, I put in a big envelope and I mail it to his accountant because they're like, it needs to be accounted for. Yeah. So um, you're getting taxed on it. <laughs> I may as well put it in. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, this boy sometimes like I would and in the beginning he needed the money yeah. you know what I mean like he'd come home from like a gig and there'd be like a $12,000 check there and I'd be like hey like you need to give this to your accountant oh, you know what I love about that and he'd be I'm like just eight like months the, old and he would lose them all the time right because yes that's, my my business manager makes them mail the check to them because they know that I'm not gonna get it. like and if I do for some reason get it they will send a messenger to take it the next day like they know that I will lose the check. And a lot of times the messenger will get there. Todd will be the one there. And he'll call me like, what do you, what, what are they here for? And I'm like, oh, the check's actually in my car. And they'll have yeah. to send a messenger again. I have the same right. but type of. Yeah, relationship. My dad would always say like, you need to keep your money organized like in my wallet. Cause I, I'd never have had a wallet. He'd be like, you don't even know how much money is in your wallet. Like that's such a bad sign for like, I think we got to be more careful. Does your, does, is Carlos your wallet now? <laughs> <laughs> you just go like, put this in your pocket. Okay. I that's do have one of her credit cards. Yeah, that's not untrue. Carlos. <laughs> what kind it. is it? Just a Chase, Chase card. Yeah, oh, wait, Chase can I just Freedom. tell you we were on our, we have like a chat thread with like Whitney and like Kesha and Amanda, like all these like powerful women, Olivia, Esther, Whitney's, what did she, I don't know how we saw what kind of credit card she had. No. She like flashed her credit card or something or she said what, what kind she had. Yeah, I don't remember. And Esther was like, we have to get one of those. And I was like, Esther, I've had one of those for like six months. It felt <laughs> so good. <laughs> but what does a fancy credit card do? It's a bigger spending limit. Oh, oh. I just have a policy against an annual fee. So I've no, I won't pay an annual fee. You've got to grow up. Yeah, but what if the annual fee <laughs> You've is... You've got to stop this nonsense. <laughs> That's ridiculous. How are we going to get into Soho House? <laughs> Carlos' <already> membership. Member. <laughs> That's so funny. They're like, who are you? <laughs> He's so I'll take you, Annie. Downtown Soho House. You do the downtown one? Yeah. WeHo's one is just like so... I want the Malibu one that's completely separate. Oh, yeah. They have a couple of those. I like have a London. policy against Soho Houses. Why? Because you it? can't take pictures? No, just because it's like, who the fuck cares? I you want to <laughs> be special? I'm sorry, Carlos. To pay like, to you want to be, you want to yes. pay to be viewed <laughs> as special. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I guess. But I've I, always had fun going. I've never been a member of it, but I've always had a good time. It does feel fun when, like, my agent or like Aquafina was in town. She had me go. Like, it is fun. Like, well, then here, are, like, how about come to Soho House? I'm, I'm, I'm to open to one. being um, to my mind being changed. I want to see what's so special. Yeah, about it. I just wanted to take girls there. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Okay, that I've makes been sense. to every restaurant in West Hollywood, Hollywood, whatever, and I was just like oh I'll, this will be a new spot wait are there good looking people there of course yeah oh, okay everybody. that I'll makes sense you, then. there is one thing about my membership i've been a member for like four months i've never been <laughs> <laughs> see but that's even cooler right <gasps> to be just haven't found the right girl to take <laughs> <laughs> except if exactly. it's planet fitness or what, what was the thing that robbed you of your membership? oh by the way they have a, 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 a collection agency coming after me for that <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, but it's like i don't want to pay them like it will just fuck my credit up so at this point i just need to pay but it's like so annoying i'm like you guys scammed me i want to sue them i'm gonna tell my business manager to sue their ass wait so carlos are there tiers to the membership or it's just one flat out no there are tiers there's under 27 which is they you want get a discount yeah it's just for like hipster wait under 27 age if you're under 27 you years old it's oh i love that i know it's shady that is shady todd can't get in get that anymore he could have that's just like how raya does it with like young hot models i feel so bad for women who who want to be on raya i just want to scream to them like 
it's just for guys to fuck 21 year old models it's not for us it's for ben affleck it's not yeah. even for like me it's like, so <laughs> rude are you on raya i've been on it like i've been on a bunch on of what dates. you've looked at scrolled through no i'm like, a member of raya like i had the membership and everything but it sucks raya's not good well i met girls on it but like to be honest it's hard to compete with ben affleck and <laughs> leonardo dicaprio it's like, like matthew perry or something <laughs> like how can i compete with matthew <laughs> perry <laughs> You guys, I love Sakara so much. I can't believe they're sponsoring us because I really truly feel they're the ultimate hot girl food. When I was shooting season two of Alone Together and I had like no brain power energy, I just had my Sakara, my healthy hot girl breakfast. It's all plant based. Did you ever leave it in your Sakara? <laughs> you have to refrigerate it later. <laughs> Um, but I really agree, like feeling your best starts with what you eat. And also what I love about Sakara is you can just order it for five days and have a reset where you don't have to make decisions about food. You know that you're having like this. It's almost like having a personal chef for a week. That's how I look at yeah, it. Yeah. Sometimes I think the hardest part about food is just planning it and you're mm -hmm. obsessing about it all day. Once it's just that's taken care of, you can move on to the next thing you're obsessing over. Sakara's plant-rich, ready-to-eat meals and functional wellness essentials nourish your body with whole organic ingredients that retrain your palate and help you break up with your sweet tooth. With your sweet tooth for good. Dave and I had it. We did like a three day, I think, um, together a couple of weeks ago. And it just was so much fun to do it with your partner. And like, it just feels like a healthy reset. Sakara's nutritionally designed, chef crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful plant rich ingredients, helping boost your energy, support your digestion. That's a huge thing for me. Curb your sugar cravings and get your skin glowing. Plus, it's all delivered, you guys, right to your door. Skin food delivered to your right door. Right to your door. It is crazy. Sometimes, like, after I eat this, people will be like, what's going on with your skin? And I'm like, I'm doing it from the inside out, baby. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash trash Tuesday or enter code trash Tuesday at checkout. That's sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash trash Tuesday to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash trash Tuesday. What are some things you discovered on your phone that you didn't know you were paying for for the past three years? Okay, um, definitely like fitness apps that I literally never touched, but somehow was subscribed for years. Mm -hmm. um, embarrassing stuff like like this app I once subscribed for that like was brain games. Like Oh, I fall for those all the time. Yeah, and I it wasn't until I started using Truebill that I realized how many things I was actually paying for that I never used. A lot of times I'll download, I just fall for it when something's like, oh, it's only $1.99. But then if you look at the fine print, it's like it ends up being like $10.99. Yeah. That was just the trial. I oh, have always. apps like editing apps. Um, oh my gosh. I have a lot of those brain games, which is so funny because you're the dark place you're in when you download those apps. I know, I know. Where you're to. like, I'm dumb, this is gonna make me smart. And then you, five years later, you're completely broke and you're like, who's the idiot now? No, Still I need me. to look at my true bill today. You um, guys, on average, people save up to $720 a year. It's because companies make subscriptions so hard to cancel, but Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts with Truebill and they will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. You know what it actually helped me with? It reminded me that I had a, I had subscribed to spray tans. That's pathetic. Is it pale? Pale one? Only because I think you look so beautiful naturally. Because I have a spray tan. <laughs> no, you look <laughs> disgusting. Also, you guys, you don't need six different anime streaming platforms, just FYI. One is enough. You Projecting. can just use my Netflix, Kalila. <laughs> right, and you know- I still have, I'm still on your um, Peloton. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't used it, but I'm on it. <laughs> no, people say this is the best financial app they've ever discovered. Like it's changing people's lives. And you guys, we want to say to you, don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash trash Tuesday. Do subscribe to the show though. Go right now. That's free, thank God. Yes. Go right now, truebill.com slash trash Tuesday. It could save you thousands a year you guys the club that i went to this weekend didn't have food which means to me oh my god everyone's going to be in a blackout because they're going to be have no food in their stomachs when they oh when they're drinking yes and i was correct so the second night 
I had this guy that picked me up from the airport who was so funny, this guy, Ron. He brought me two loaves of bread and butter and I had it just stashed on the stage. And then when people started heckling me, I started throwing bread at them. <laughs> and this one girl wouldn't stop talking. She was very sweet. She was like a fan. but So I felt bad, but she was just so wasted and wouldn't she stop talking. So I went and I just crammed her mouth filled with bread. Oh, mama bird. It was so, it was, I'm going to so tell you. So you assaulted an audience member? Well, she would have been kicked out. She was very lucky to be there. But um, <laughs> I mean, she should have been gone. But then I walked, this other guy wouldn't stop talking. So I went and he like opened his mouth and I just balled it up and put it in his mouth. It's so good. Videos to come. <laughs> what well, it was. I'm, I'm into that mama bird vibe. I, but I was like throwing like a frisbee. Like you've never felt power until you've shoved someone's mouth filled with bread. You guys, this weekend I went to like a cool person party and like- I saw vids. Yeah, so- I didn't, where were they? I On my Instagram story, I-, I Gotta unmute her. <laughs> <laughs> so muted her. I like- it's a different world out there. Like, what was I, it? Tell me. I was at a party and it was like some, like, through my like fashion cool girlfriends, but I didn't know that hot people, they'll just, they keep their pools really hot. And then at like midnight, they all get in the pool and like get naked. And like, I'm like, this is really happening. Were you wearing that swimsuit? I refuse to get in the pool. Well, I, obviously your pubes are done. To me. <laughs> she, she flashed me in the bathroom and I was like, this is like the least surprising thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I've never seen you without a bush to your knees. I made the feminist choice today and I have <laughs> a lot of fuzz. Um, but you know, I saw your um, growth pattern and mine is similar. I just handle it as a choice. Look how yeah. mad she is at you. Do you really get it though, like inches down the leg? I don't believe that. I used to, and then I got a couple, I, I got like only a few, um, what do you call it? Laser sessions once. And so it's not like fully gone, but it's less than it used to be. I want to get full laser, but I think I figured out what bush, I, I didn't know what type of bush I wanted, so I didn't want to get laser yet. Because mm. <laughs> it's forever. What are you considering? I'm considering like, because um, I used to really like a triangle, but I don't know, with the way you are, I don't want you to think I'm like hitting on you. <laughs> like I like the little Dorito, Dorito, but I think I want like a longer like Dorito. I it's like not long a Doritos are good. I like when the pubes come up high on the, um, like here, I'll show you how high. So like, I oh like it. Oops. We're about to see it. <laughs> like up to here. Yes. And not like too skinny, but not too thick. Like. I, I actually really like pubes on women. Yeah, I don't. Th I, I don't want to go. Attractive. Yeah, I don't like nothing. I Esther, are you okay? I, a little nervous? No, I'm like thinking <laughs> about it. I know that like no pubes was like had its moment. I never liked. But that. I agree. I think like tame. It's just so hard for me to ever have that because for me it's like all or nothing because there's so much there's no taming it. You never just pull a product and give it a little uh, side part. <laughs> a little tease. <laughs> I'm in, I'm impressed with how all of us like. Yeah. Well, Ky Kyla has always been evolved. You and I have been children. Yeah. Evolved. What? I'm the least evolved person. I just pretend, pretend. She pretend. is a better, no offense, actress. Yes. yes. <laughs> no offense. She's a no, better actress. No, you though. are so much more a grown up than me and Annie. No, that is untrue. What? We are projected. She's like she gives mommy off because you give baby off. Yeah. <laughs> and you need the her dynamic to be is between us. You know, is not. She's it's better like, at homework than us. She's Asian. No offense. <laughs> you guys are amazing. But I am a big time procrastinator. I'm mm. somebody who has like um, that kind of avoidance the, okay. where it's like if someone tells me what to do, I will make sure I will never do it. Okay. So I have been working a lot on my procrastination. And the thing I was listening to today, the Florence Scoville Shin thing today was saying, um, or no, wait, this was a Jim Fortin thing I was listening to. It's Jim Fortin, follows podcast. Um, it was that procrastination is you're breaking your word to yourself. So that's, you don't have self-integrity, which is low self-esteem. Mm. Dude, yes. yes. It's low self-esteem. I've, I've been hearing this, my source is TikTok, but like, <laughs> yeah, when you keep your word to yourself, that is the only way to build self, not the only way, but that is a key to building self-esteem. And I've worked on that for myself a lot. Like I used to always, okay, I used to be like, I think I'm gonna work out today. Like, I don't know, I think so. Because mm -hmm. I never believed in myself. Mm -hmm. I was too insecure to say, I'm gonna walk today because I was like, well, maybe I won't. And but then, also think about what exercise is, right? It's giving to yourself, it's being good to your body. So it is true. That is how I always tell people. I was like, you don't have to do this, you get to do this. Right. But 
Another but you're thing, good at that. Like there's certain things you're good I'm at. But I'm not. So I realize now why I always take like a mental health dip when I'm not working out. And it's not because I feel bad about my physical self. I feel bad that I said I would and didn't. So you're mm -hmm. correct. I yes. did break my promise to myself. And then that's like something you kind of want. You're craving that. Like we're addicted to feeling that feeling of like letting ourselves down. Also, I distrust my own head in that moment where I'm like, I set out to do something that I ended up not doing. Then I don't have a full trust in who I am. Exactly. So your, your self-esteem becomes yeah. low. And what I have that makes to sense, remind myself is it's all up to me. If I want to go for a walk, it's up to me. No yeah. one can stop, you know, unless there's work or whatever. Yeah. But like... So I can say, you know what, today at three o'clock, I am going to walk and I and like believe it and do it. I don't yeah, know. The, he, he was also saying today on the thing I was listening to, listening to was like that you um, like if you are there's a study that if you if you have to go into work every day and people always have cupcakes there for you, if you make the decision before you're presented with the. Op option if you make the decision in the morning like i'm not going to eat this or before you go into the office like i'm not going to have the cupcake or whatever i don't know why i brought up cupcakes but um cupcake gate was a thing i know you have to eat a cupcake um <laughs> <laughs> on the show apparently you, do. you have to you have a problem um <laughs> Maybe you just get heartburn from it. You don't like it. Um, that if you make the decision before you go in, you have like a 50% higher chance of following through. Because if you think about it, someone else had said, I don't know where I heard this. It was through one of these million of things I listened to. But it's like, if you committing 100% is actually so easy, it's committing 90% is so hard because you have that wavering part where you're like, ooh, should I, shouldn't I? If you just make like a, this is like definitely gonna happen. That is my problem with working out as well. If I feel like I cannot give balls to the wall effort, then I feel like I shouldn't do it at all. And in regards to That's procrastination, all it's an all or nothing. In regards to procrastination, the other layer for me is the perfectionism. Yes, it's I have like, that too. Well, I will not start something that I know I might not execute you know, with excellence. And then mm -hmm. I keep saying, today is not the day I don't feel like I can really, right. you know, even though 90, 80, 75, 20, 10 percent is fine yeah. that day. A little bit is fine. Yeah. Anything is fine that day. But in my head, it's like I like the pressure. The pressure then forces me to be like, you have no choice. Now you have to give 100 now, now, now. Right. And then you're hard on yourself. If and you don't. yeah. And then it all falls apart. So perfectionism is also a thing I've been like really trying to focus on. And I think because it does, it gives you like that failure to like even like launch off and like failure to even you get like paralyzed sometimes if you're trying to be too perfect because you're not going to achieve perfection. That's impossible. But perfectionism comes from um, feeling like people won't love you if you're not perfect. And right. that makes so much sense yeah. if we think about like how you were treated with the swimming and stuff. Yeah. So it's like it's all that. So. All of those things are love you have to give yourself. So it's like we have to train ourselves to say to ourselves things that feel weird, you know, about how we love ourselves. We believe in ourselves. Like, I, you know, like I love working out. Working out's great. It's good for my body. I feel good. Like, you just have to keep like talking to yourself in a way that um, makes you actually do the action. I agree. It's, it's always shocking to me that the nicer I am to myself, the more I get done, the more I'm productive, the more I'm a better worker. It's when I'm hard on myself, like you didn't do this. That's a, that's a disaster. Yeah. I, then I'm worse. And like, but it's so hard. It's I'm always fighting the instinct to be mean to myself. Yeah, me it, too. It's to hard you. to fighting the instinct to be mean to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, so fun. It's hard to be like today. You can just t be easy. But if I, but it's weird. Then I would actually be more productive if I said yeah. be easy today. I don't know. I will say that the brain I is fucked up. I thought I I you know I have these uh, food restrictions for my TMJ diet that I'm on. And on the road, it's a little bit hard to follow those, but I just haven't been worrying about it. I've just been trying to make good choices. And when I don't, I don't like shame myself or anything. And I was like, not gonna weigh myself. Cause I was like, oh, what if I like gained weight or whatever? Sorry, I'm talking about weight guys. I know this is hard for you, but um, I, so then I like weighed myself and it was crazy. I weigh less than I did since I like gained weight in the pandemic because I just stopped like, I'm not like, clinging to it it's just like whatever you i have know? to say it's like intuitive eating personally like i obviously eating disorder past and all that but lifelong binge eater um <laughs> i the Bingy scale flalo, they call her <laughs> <laughs> the scale is not my friend no oh yeah no i i would i usually like don't own one also it's not accurate it simply yeah. isn't accurate you're 
there have been many times where I felt the strongest, most ripped, most lean, and have been way heavier. And it just doesn't match. Like you yeah. should go by how you feel. And um, if you know that you know you're generally doing things right by your body, fuck a scale. Yeah. I don't own a scale. Bobby, um, after he relapsed and he got sober, he bought a scale because it was one thing that he yeah. could again fixate on. It was almost control, like this control. Yeah. And I had to move it downstairs because I'm like, you have two choices. I move it downstairs. I'm going to throw this thing away. I know it's brand new from Bed Bath and Beyond, but I, I cannot have it. <laughs> well, because it can start being fun, like where you're like, how much does my shit weigh? <laughs> and you like wear yourself before the show. <laughs> oh, I do that. <laughs> but then you get two, like then you're like thinking number. You don't Are you kidding numbers. me? Yeah. Here's the thing. So when that weight, that weighing scale was there for a couple weeks, that's exactly what yeah. I did. I would only weigh myself after a massive yeah. shit. <laughs> no other time. And really early in the morning. Yeah. And making sure that I hadn't even had water or yeah. banana. I'm like, I'm back to my bullshit. Yeah. How quick was it for me to be back to my bullshit? You know, I will say that it did help me on this in this circumstance just because I went into it, just the emotion around it, not the actual act. Like the feeling of going into something going, ooh, I have dread around this experience. Like, oh, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to have gained so much weight or whatever. And it's like, I, you know, then I did it and I was like, oh, this is fine and it's nothing. And, but it really doesn't, it's never indicative to like your health really, unless no, it's like. it means nothing because everybody has different body composition. That's yeah, just oh, yeah. it, different, it, it literally means nothing. And you just get older and you just change too. It's like, yeah. if I look back on, if I were to weigh the weight that I weighed back in the day when I thought I was like, needed to lose five pounds or whatever, when I was young, I would look like shit. It would just not look good on me. Like, I just don't, I just really, I liked how I gained weight in the pandemic. Like, it seemed like the right thing. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It felt like good. To Do you know what is also so squishy. heartbreaking, which I hope this, like, I wish there was a way to put an end to this. But, like, when I look back at my journals from elementary school, from mm. middle school, from high school, I'm literally writing down weights and goal weights. There are numbers in wow. there. And that is so sad was it was it something That's you saw in school was your mom really into losing weight i think it's yes. i think it was <laughs> yeah it's i think it's family oriented i yeah. i think it's family i we think we forgive them we love them no but i think it's also like culture yeah tv movies actresses Bad boyfriends. like people you date friends and literally like the worst of it was and i love i'm still fans of these people but like the nicole richie lindsay lohan when they would like go out and be stick thin and like Again, that's that's I don't I don't judge them, but that was a part of the culture was like to, that was the ideal beauty standard. Also, for a when moment. Nicole Richie was big, was she not the funniest? She yeah. was so funny she and so, so beautiful. Pretty. I remember when they were doing she was doing something. She was like meeting with a trainer on something and the trainer was mad at her because she ate um, Taco Bell on the way in. <laughs> I was like, I love this bitch. She's that's so, so funny. Well, that's what I used to always like when I had gained weight in the pandemic. I was like, this is, I'm actually like I feel like I'm getting a little funnier through it i mean this is all made up in my head but i was like i didn't have that much of an initiative because i didn't feel like unhealthy so i didn't have like an initiative i wasn't like trying to lose weight or anything mm -hmm. and i was like this is funnier and obviously my abs drawn on is funnier the bigger i am i just the biggest lesson to me is like or my biggest takeaway on this subject is like and it sounds so cheesy and basic and easy to figure out but like it's just how you feel. How do I feel mm -hmm. in my body? How do I feel like in, I don't know, in my clothes, whatever. Yeah. It, yeah. It just feels so good to like, remember I talked about a little while ago when I was like in yoga and I was looking at my, I like decided to like be in front of the mirror and just accept myself, like not even like judging whether I'm skinny, fat or anything, like just like that I'm me and it just felt so good. And just the idea of just eating a thing that you wanna eat, like it sucks if you said, I don't wanna do something and then you do it and then you have that sort of guilt around it. Just not having guilt and not shaming yourself and just like living in the moment of your life feels so good. And I've really, I get like help for that. Like even last night, Carl, I'm sorry I didn't tell you this. No, I'm just kidding. I had, a small bowl of ice cream and popcorn after what <laughs> together in one <laughs> yum after a big dinner i went to the movies bitch i had i had nachos i had popcorn i had all of it i really respect that combo because it's savory and sweet Thank you have you. to alternate the best yeah. of the best yeah it's like french fries with um, um milkshakes oh god they're good my <sighs> brother's dream. wedding had that oh so good yeah. really yeah. <laughs> but like i ate that 
And I was feeling really guilty. And I noticed that when I was feeling guilty about it, it was making me want to eat more. Uh And so I really had to be like, Esther, what you did was okay. It was normal. And then I like just had to tell myself to feel okay. But the more you feel the shame and the guilt, the worse you're going to do. It's. And you'll probably even give yourself like physical pain too. You know, you're going to give yourself like heartburn and stuff. Just thinking like, it's just. Love yourself. Love yourself. You just got to be like, I love myself. I love myself. It's so simple and it's almost embarrassing how simple it is. Speaking so of like, I um, I binging, I binged this weekend and I loved what I binged on because I discovered something new that I was probably very late on, which is the the Ritz um, um, cream cheese and onion little. Oh, um, yeah. Um, I dusted a whole bag and then went out and got another bag. And I'm telling you this morning before this swimsuit episode, Dusted another half a bag. And oh, it was delicious. Guys, if we're doing swimsuit, that, I'm going to the movies beforehand. Look at this. You guys, I apparently... Yeah, I've had those. Those are good. Todd likes those. My, everyone calls them demon crisps because <laughs> they... Those those aren't it. Toasted chips. Or maybe they are. Yes, they are. That's that I just had the bigger so bag. Um, really the best thing I've ever eaten. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for discovering a new snack that I can really, really dig into. That's so much fun. I am so proud to say this podcast is sponsored by Nutrafol because all three of us use it religiously and it makes our hair fluffy and beautiful. I was so upset when I went on family vacation and I left my vitamin bag at home because there are other vitamins you can just get at the store. Nutrafol is it though. That is my favorite. That's premium. It's my favorite. I went to my, I've been like dying to do this ad because I went to my um, hairstylist and she was like in shock. She's like, it's so much thicker. I thought I had all these flyaways. She's like, this is new growth. This is all oh, new wow. hairs coming in. Yeah. I got the seal of approval from my girl and she's been begging me to take it. You know what I, me. you know what I love about Nutrafol? I love a product that doesn't promise an overnight fix. I love a product that's like, hey, these are just good vitamins that support this type of growth, hair it's- growth. This I wish more companies would follow suit of how Nutrafol has like tackled hair loss because you're right. It's not an overnight fix. It's not a fake marketing thing. Like it's actual scientifically backed ingredients that are good for you regardless. Um, you guys, 30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair. For me, at least, that happened when I turned 30 and I stopped birth control and my my entire head of hair just came off. And I remember just crying, like thinking like, this is just how it's going to be until Nutrafol. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life. And like Kyla said, healthier hair growth takes time. Like you will notice results in three to six months. No, it's awesome. Honestly, like I'm just getting to that like six month mark now. So it's like I'm starting to see the results and I'm really excited about it. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash trash and save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash trash. Can I just tell you some of the ways my life has changed since I got my mental health in order? I walk every day. I was able to start my own clothing line. I I respect myself. I have self-esteem. And these are all things that would not be possible at all if I didn't seek help for my mental health issues. Mm-hmm. I have boundaries with my family. Like I have all these wonderful- And your friends, <laughs> <laughs> coworkers. <laughs> Like, that is why today we're talking about better help, which is online therapy. It just you, makes it all of the reasons you wouldn't go to therapy. You don't want to have to, like, struggle to make the appointment. I know I'm one of those people that I struggle with. Like, if I, if anything's, I can finally get the courage to make that first step. And then if someone doesn't call me back or anything like that, it's a wrap. I'll try again next year. And, so with better help, <laughs> it's just easy. It's easy. And you can get matched with a licensed therapist in under 48 hours. On top of that, they have this really cool journal feature, um, which I personally love to fill out all poems, the way. Because, you know, in the interim between my sessions, I, you know, I have a lot of thoughts yeah. and feelings. And then that way I can we can refer to those notes. Um, yeah, you don't have to try session. to memorize your problems. <laughs> they, and, and it's hard. You know, they're human yeah. beings too, you know. It's 
we're burned out. And when you talk with someone about your problems, that's how you can figure out what is the source and the cause and help you address these issues like at the root. And you don't, so many of the doctor's appointments I've had to go to since the pandemic ended, you know what I realized is the most annoying? Finding parking. You have to get there early. You have to find parking. I hate LA Oh, it's cash only? Oh, great. I don't have any freaking cash. Oh, wait, I forgot my my debit card. Oh, cool. So now you have $40 and I have to come back and pay you. You have my license. Great. This is fun. And now I'm in prison. Thanks. And now I'm in prison because I got in a fight with the guy. But it's like, (laughs) you can just do it online. You don't have to even show your face to them if you don't want. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, and that's me a lot of the time. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Trash Tuesday listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. friend too my friend works with uh, a lot of girls with eating disorders she's a therapist and she would always say to me like especially with things like popcorn or something like that it's like your body probably really needed fiber or something like if that's something you're craving there's mm-hmm. something like in your body telling you to eat that i mean maybe not always but no yeah it could be yeah but- in, in the peak of my eating disorder i had people pry food from my hand i would like double fist this one filipino treat called hopia what and is it, it? It's like this round little like filled, they're filled in. Anyways, it's a sugary, dense street. And I would just be like, you know, y- you know, as a binger, you're not thinking. You're in this like buzz in your head mm-hmm. and you're just putting everything and in your like, mouth. And you're like, my mouth feels good. More, more. Um, oh, that so looks those are those so round good. Things. And they come in these like rolls and I would just like, you could see like the, my, you know, no one was home. Like yeah, the yeah. lights were on, no one's yeah. home and you're just shoving <laughs> no food in your... You know, there's no stopping. There's me. no stopping. Yeah. yeah. It's, and and it, it's from yeah. one thing to the other. I mean, in my bad days, like I would go from drive through to drive through, like it was dark. <laughs> um, I want to um, ask you guys something. I feel really, really salty about. Um, so Bobby and I, you know, we, we've we been getting pedicures and manicures Ooh. together. It's our thing. How long? Um, what do you mean? How long have you been doing that? Just always? Uh, just the last like two months. Okay. Um, he finally I like new agreed. Bobby. Yeah. So he's, he's very much... Uh, um, a demanding guy. And he's like, I want this, I want this. He wants gel. He wants clear gel because he still wants to look natural. So he knows all the things now. <laughs> clear gel? Clear gel I've yeah. never heard of natural. that. Um, so it's very, his fingers are very shiny. That's so funny. And his toenails are very shiny. He should get his nails done. Why not? Um, He usually does. Well, he gets but he color. should get them like, with, oh, he does. He should color. do what I get. Oh. I like, am so, the way you like, your TikToks are really making me want long nails again, but I want to type. I never do, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> So we go to the nail salon. I g- basically just get a basic, basic pedicure. Basic. Didn't even get a manicure. I was like, just clean out my cuticles, whatever. Clean out? Yeah, because I didn't want to. What the fuck do you got in there? She didn't want an ingrown hair. Yeah, like, you know, the cuticles. <laughs> Don't try to shame her like she's the gross one. Yeah. So, we also, you Thank looked you, at her, Carlos. Carlos wasn't even giving you like the okay. You looked at everyone. You're like, Pete, can you put, present yourself? So basically the cheapest package, right? Yeah. So uh, in your head, like that would cost what? Like 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 25 maybe bucks. Maybe max 40 bucks mm-hmm. if it's like a, a fancier place. Bobby gets his gel up top, his gel on the bottom. And then his bill was maybe like, let's say 70, right? He tips each person, the um, the person who did his um, feet and the person who did his hands, 50 bucks each mm-hmm. in front of the people who are doing my hands <laughs> and doing my feet. <laughs> and then he goes and he says, beep that. <gasps> and then now I could hear the ladies talking to each other like, how much did he tip you? How much? And we're there together. They know like we're there together. So now these people <laughs> are thinking, oh, we're going to get the You know what you do tip? in that situation? You give them... Fifty-one dollars each, <laughs> just Listen, to have the clout over him. I, I, I was going to tip well, anyways. Like I think I'm a generally yeah, yeah, yeah. good tipper, but I fuck that pressure that he just put on me. I was in a fucking rage Bobby that I had people. to tip fifty bucks to each person that did mine on a forty-dollar bill. <gasps> but I had to. I had to at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was no choice. Like it would have been better. Honestly, it would have been a better move of his to do it. After you'd already tipped to then shame your tip on top of it. So I should have been 51 then. 
I would give like a tiny bit more. I'd be like, you can't win this, Bobby. But I will go right into those power moves with Bobby. Bobby's power move, man. But it's not about. I, I will go right into it with him. I don't have his game, money. Bobby? I don't have his money. That's well, a lot of money. Yeah. Well, I would when we left. I would go. You owe me a hundred dollars. Fucking money, Bobby. <laughs> Yeah, that is interesting. Like, do you need to strategize about with tips beforehand with people? Like, because you know when the bill comes and you split it. Like, yeah. I, I'm always like, what are what are we doing? Like, let's let's get right. on a team. You know, codependent. <laughs> I just tip fat. It doesn't. I don't look at other people's tips because it doesn't matter. Like, they're not gonna like I remember guess which true. person it was or whatever unless we're like recognized by them. I'm also referring to like years ago. Like, yeah. I don't think I. Do Olivia, they go out to dinner with people anymore? <laughs> Olivia took us out to eat. Did I tell this on here? I want to write a, do a post about it. She took Todd and I out to eat when we were like so broke in the pandemic. Olivia Munn. And she tipped, like she bought, she had already paid, like paid, there was some, they wouldn't let her tip like really fat on the regular bill. So she had to buy like a water bottle from them too. And then she tipped them like $1,000 on the water bill. It was so. Oh, wow. And then she's always like, you haven't posted about it, huh, Annie? I'm like, Olivia, I'm getting to the post. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's just so funny. She's always sending me like when other people get. I know. feel like that, that whole story just made Esther like tighten up and clench a little bit. No, I, I think I, we all have different financial situations. Oh, listen, I'm not <laughs> dropping a thousand dollars. I'll give someone 20 bucks on a taco, though. It depends yeah. on my mood. It's like, am I feeling the vibes and stuff? It's mm. I don't always tip people that fat. It's just I always try to tip over 20 percent, though, Anytime just from I being a waitress. Anytime I have family members come into town from the Philippines, like that's the first thing, that's the first talk I have with them. I'm like, this is a tipping country. Yeah. Like you have to tip. And it's just um because there's so much like lost in translation in regards to tipping, yeah. you know? It's just different rules for different countries. Sometimes I feel like when I'm out to dinner with my parents, like I have to like hide the bill and what I tip. Were you there that time when my mom was like looking at the receipt and like <laughs> pretending yeah, it, like she had some like f weird maneuver. But yeah, like the receipt was in the middle of the table, and she acted like she wanted like more chips or something, and was like, "Oh, this is here. I'll take a look." <laughs> it was very oh like, my easy god. To see. Well, I went out to eat with my ex boy, my parents, and my ex boyfriend's parents. Okay, and he had a stepdad, and his mom took out like a second job so she could send him money. Poor boy. Okay, he was had failure to thrive. But oh, he, that's um, a real thing. He FTP. really did. He really did. And I, you know, he seems to be happy now. He got a motorcycle. The thing with babies, failure to thrive. He had, he just, his dad passed away when he was little and he just was, he was a, cha he had some challenges in life. But he, um, his mom was like secretly supporting him because his stepdad didn't agree with it because, you know, I think it does like enable the kids if you do it for too long or whatever. He was 30. But she was pretty much like paying his rent, sending him money and stuff. So we're at dinner with his family and his stepdad goes, I'll get this. Thank you so much for covering his flight. So his mom had like lied to his dad and said that my dad had covered his son's flight. Oh, my God. And so my and my dad just had to like take it. My dad's like, oh, my. It was just so awkward. Like, we're all just like, oh, my dad was like, oh. And I was like, I just had to like grab his hand and be like, do not. Whoa, that must be hard. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Also, I have a question. At what point do the parents have to meet each other in a relationship? Like your your boyfriend's parents and your parents met and had dinner. Like what are the rules in regards to in-laws meeting each other for the first time? Like how far in do they meet? Only if it's serious. I lived with him. So it was like. Yeah, that's sense. serious. But also then. my family, I have like dated so many guys from New Jersey for some reason. Todd's from New Jersey. My family's in Philly. They're going to move to New Jersey soon. So it's like... Your family's moving to New Jersey? Well, my parents want to move. They want to move closer to the boys. Oh, yeah. yeah. When did uh, your parents meet Dave's parents? Not for a while because they're, we live in, all live in different cities. Yeah, it's I think it wasn't until we met... Um, I brought my parents to Cape Cod for a vacation and then Dave's parents met us there. And we had like a night or maybe like an afternoon together. Um, you know, I'm always very embarrassed of my parents, like being around other people. So it's, I'm always very on edge when I'm around them just because like they're just a liability. Um, <laughs> That's how Dave feels about you every time I've ever seen him. Correct. <laughs> correct. Um, I feel like I was in no rush for that to happen. And I don't think there is any rush. I don't think you need to rush that. I think you need to be so secure because 
I never want to be in a position where I'm dating someone and I'm like, are my parents going to blow this for me? Yeah. I need to be so comfortable and confident but that they're not going to. But I think it's a common know. feeling. Because yeah. Because like our parents are going to embarrass us too at some point. Like I just know that – Thank God for my mom's um, language um, barrier because oh, right, yeah. I can just blame it on that. I'd be like, well, you know, there was if, – if she says something really, like, you know, off color, I'd be like, well, well you know, she, English is not her first Refugee. language. But my stepdad, Roger, he's a loose cannon. <laughs> he's just – he cannot be trusted. He's, he's so lovely. He doesn't take things personally ever. So he assumes that other people won't take things personally. Yeah. He has a memory of a freaking walnut. Like, it's like seven <laughs> seconds. So he doesn't remember what he does – Who's like rough, you know, feathers he's ruffled. He's just like, what's up, sweetie? You know, like he's such a happy-go-lucky yeah. guy that I'm just like, I can't take this motherfucker nowhere. See, I love crazy parents. That's the thing. Like, I, I'm i just, in, I have like some sort of em embarrassment and fear of my own. Like, but I love being with them when it's just me and it's like a safe space. And then I love other people's crazy parents. Like, if your parents aren't crazy, like, I'm out. Yeah. Like I want chaos. Like I want them fighting. Like I want I want to laugh at any crazy thing they say. To me yeah. that's so entertaining. I, and safe and comfortable. My my dad I don't know how to even explain what my dad does. He does he holds you captive. Like <laughs> he you tell him information and you're happy to tell him. My dad's so funny. I tell him any funny story that happens, right? And then he has this information and then he'll like, he'll dangle it like he's gonna <laughs> tell the person you told them. Like, where you're like, it's so funny. It's such an adrenaline rush. It's yes. so fucking funny. It's like such a prank, but it's so fucking deeply humiliating. Like, okay, so I, I had a boyfriend who, his mom came to visit us and we were living in a studio apartment together. And uh, we were laying on the bed when she came out of the shower and she was wearing her robe and she was talking about one of his cousins and how she had always been very butch. So she got up and she was, she, we were laying there. So she was like waist level to our face. And she showed how like every time you put her in her dress, she would just hike her skirt up. And she pulled her, without realizing, she pulled her robe up and exposed her bare vagina to us. Okay. Who did this? My boyfriend's mom, my ex-boyfriend's mom. I love her. And she went like this. She was like, <laughs> okay and our faces were right like we're snatch level and it was great it was a beautiful vagina cuter than mine a little annoying um my favorite level it was snatch level snatch level baby that's what you're that's your height <laughs> your snatch level you are snatch level you're my snatch look she level. snatched at snatch level thank you but um but my boyfriend like when he goes ma like we're like Oh my God, like we're like about to just like explode. It's like the funniest thing that's ever happened, right? But she didn't notice. She didn't feel the gust of wind. She had, was completely oblivious. So I had to like elbow him, like, do not fucking tell her, like, just let it go. Like, she could never know because there's no jurisdiction on that humiliation. There isn't. If she found out 10 years later, right now, that that had happened, she yeah. would be mortified. Yeah. So I tell my dad the story, obviously, because it's so funny, right? I tell my parents, my dad loves it. We're at dinner with them and he keeps being like, pass the same. Like, he's just having the most fun. Yeah. Can you pass the pink fish? Like, I mean, just everything he was saying was like, I was like, dad, I'm going to kill you. But he didn't. He didn't release the info. Our dads are so similar. I know they should get together because I feel like they might fight, but they'll eventually get together. They would never fight. Are you kidding? Physically. <laughs> <laughs> Um, whose no, my dad, dad can beat up whose? <laughs> I think your dad could. I don't know. My dad has balance issues. My dad is so thin. My dad's but... dead. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. Pull that I'll bring him. Let's exhume him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have his corpse fight your dad's. My dad did. Okay, so my downstairs neighbor, stop me if I've already told this story, was very like, I had had friends that lived in that apartment before we moved in and they were like, she's really annoying. She can't stand like just walking around. She gets so upset about all the sound and stuff. Who and does? So the, it was a downstairs oh. neighbor. And so when I moved in, knowing that I'm way louder than the yes. people that were living there before, I gave no access to this woman. Like I didn't let her feel comfortable to come talk to me or anything. <laughs> I was very cold to her because I'm like, we're not going to make it through. I cannot be less loud than I am. But so... My dad, I tell him that, and my dad gets high, we like smoked weed, and my dad starts stomping on the floor. He goes, no. fucking bitch. I was like, dad, <laughs> oh my God, dad. I, it's not like I we've ever discussed that I'm loud. And I'm like, dad, oh my God. And then when we were leaving, the windows had those like, those, like glass slots that they have in like the old. Mm -hmm. So it was like Jealousy. Open. It was open. Isn't that what they're called, the windows? They're called jealousy. They're called jealousy. Oh, I love that. 
But so we had the jealousy pains and my dad like pretends to look and he goes, oh, she's fingering herself. But it's like fully, oh, it's no. fully <laughs> open. So I'm just like, oh my God, so I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, dad, I actually live here. And he's like laughing. He thinks it's the funniest thing. Yes, the jealousy. Mm. Yeah. And, um, and so I just told him, I was like, well, I'm just going to tell her you're senile. Like if it ever comes up, I'm going to say I have a senile father and <laughs> that's that. on you. Love that. But it was, so that's what I've grown up with. My dad just my whole life at risk in his hands that all the only thing that makes me think of is like the time my mom picked me up from school from in middle school and it was halloween and she was wearing a witch costume oh it's so embarrassing i'm like this is too but that i will say was almost like my vaccine against embarrassment like once that once my mom <laughs> showed up to pick me up in front of all my middle school friends in a witch's costume on halloween though like it's so appropriate but when middle school, you're at that age mm. where everything is embarrassing. Yeah. Queens are hard, yeah. Mm. And I, I was like, what? I just was wondering how you would feel if your mom went to drop you off at your swim team and then was also in a swimsuit and on the team. <laughs> because <laughs> my sorry? mother did do that, yes. I'm my mom sorry. joined our swim team. No, she did not. She joined our swim team. <laughs> yes, she did. And she had pubes like yours. It was so fucking embarrassing. I was like, mom, you're supposed to shave your hair. <laughs> And she, yeah, she swam. There was a 15, and um, you can pass them out. There was a 15. Oh, I thought you were going to be shirtless for the banana break. Put a banana in your pants, too. I'll put a banana in my You would. Shut up. <laughs> He's always like, no, and then does it. <laughs> See? Yes. Ew. <laughs> Did, have you ever is. heard of, like, the two-minute rule? Oh, yeah, I like that one. I, it helped me for a while and I forgot it was something I implemented and then I went back to being just you know. have it. It's but okay. two minutes if it if it only takes under two minutes do it like if you're like oh I gotta wash the dishes um, but if it's two dishes and it'll you know it's not gonna take more than that then you should just commit to the under two minute rule I was thinking um, the sorry it was the five second rule where it's like when you you want to do something mm. like you're like oh i know i have to like go take a shower i'm just thinking of something hard for you um <laughs> or like i have to go clean this thing or i have to go work out i committed to working out you just go you just count to five and you just have to do it by and five. then you get up and yeah. do it mm. i can't remember the name of the woman Oof, we should the have depression like doesn't really money. Um, the depression does not allow me on some days. It just really, no. just, this is like a fucking massive boot on my neck. And yeah. I, you know, I can have, that's the worst part about depression is that I can still have all of these ambitions and things that I know I want to do, but I have no physical desire to yeah. actually get up off of like from bed. One thing that's helped me is that I allow those days to happen. Now, I don't have depression, so I know that that's not a, doesn't work for everyone, mm. but I will have days where I have all these ideas in my head of all the things I want to do, but physically I'm just out for the count and I'm like that's fine. Like yeah. I'm just going to let myself have that. Um I don't know what made me think of this, but I have a question for you guys. Like let's just say there was a world in a fantasy world where you were in a same-sex relationship committed like that was going to be your person would you ever want to do a thing where like if you were going to have babies that you would get your eggs out essentially like i would carry your egg baby and you would carry mine and then mm. we'd like that that feels like such a wonderful way to like have Two women have the same baby. I it think sounds that people like, do that. So you're each other's surrogates. It sounds yes. like it sounds like sperm scissoring, honestly. What's that? <laughs> like it's a scissoring of you're like you're like swapping. Yeah. It's a, it's the sense that like I got you pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my egg is in your body. Yeah. That's it's, cool. It's kinda cool. Oh, you just sit at home and think of these things? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just look at your chest and think of them. <laughs> this is my two pregnant stomachs. I just want to uh, assure you, though, Esther, we could scissors you and I all we want, and that's nine. There's no pregnancy that's going to happen <laughs> from that. No, you have to do the what you. Annie is, has them available, so I could carry her baby Who anytime I want. Who wants a quarter Asian boy? <laughs> <laughs> you can get up the half. Wait, you want the half? <laughs> I want the half. It's such a what I did. That was so hard. That was a really hard experience. People don't really, I mean, I guess some people talk about it. Are you fully recovered? Yes. Okay. That's motivating. Unless I have to use it as an excuse later this week for some reason. So, <laughs> so Carlos brought this up. Tips to look after your husband. Huh. 
This is from. <laughs> I didn't bring 1950s. It up. <laughs> you brought. <laughs> this is from extract 1950s home economics book. Is that what this mm-hmm. is from? Yeah. Have dinner ready. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Todd is the best husband. Um, prepare yourself. Take 15 minutes to rest so you will be refreshed when he arrives. Okay, that's very Mrs. Mabel. Um, that Mabel. actually is great for anyone. Just take 15 minutes before you see anyone. Yeah, refresh. Bird bath. Oh, Clear- did it say a bath? No, oh, I, I said think... Lay. Oh, I hate this, this one. Clear away the clutter. Make one last trip through the house, through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives, gathering up school books, toys, paper, etc. Then run a dust cloth over... I literally think my mom read this and like it... Yeah, this sounds like your mom. This is my mom. Your husband will feel he has reached a haven of rest and order and it will give you a lift too. I hate this. I'm so uncomfortable. The reason I hate this is because I I want this for myself. What? The reason I hate this is because I want this for myself. Same, of course. Instead of having to like... Come over to my house. But this magazine is training women to be servants. Okay, let me see. Minimize all noise. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> um, some don'ts. Don't greet him with problems or complaints. <laughs> don't complain if he's late for dinner. Okay, we'll go up a little bit, But Carlos. it's funny. Count this as minor compared with what he might have gone through that day. <laughs> I'm right. so sick. Prepare the children. Listen to him, guys. Listen to him. Make the evening his. Never complain if he does not take you out to dinner or other forms of entertainment. Instead, try to understand his world of strain and pressure, his need to come home and relax. The goal, try to make your home a place of peace and order where your husband can renew himself in body and spirit. I just can't imagine being like a like stay-at-home mom dealing with the fucking kids all day. And then your husband comes home and not just being <laughs> like, you scumbag, you weren't here today. <laughs> you weren't here. You weren't here. You know what makes me sad is that somewhere, somehow, I learned this. And this is exactly how I've been in relationships. What? Yeah. I've always cooked. I always freshen up before someone comes near me. I always... um, Well, I mean, I do a baby wipe to the vagina, you know? The vagina, but the ass first. (laughs) Ass to vagina. We know she wipes. Some version of it. Get a little poo-poo in the the pee-pee hole. (laughs) (laughs) I clear away the clutter. I always clear away the clutter. Esther puts one in the stink and two in the pink. No, one in the pink and two (laughs) in the stink. (laughs) I'm... Wait, so Kalila... But come on, you know, it was, never complain. It was put in my head that I was useless. Like, what a shame you are if if you don't know how to cook. But that applied to both men and women growing up. It wasn't just a woman thing because I a lot of my male um, cousins and uncles, everyone cooks. Yeah. But it's more like you have to know how to cook. I'll say this. When I do get energized and like make things tidy mm. and, you know, make a turkey mm. wrap and do little things like that, I feel good. I like it. But for me, what's triggering, I think, is like that this was in a magazine and this is like what they were telling women to do. That makes me so uncomfortable for some reason. Yeah, it's 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 horrible because now I feel like mostly I do these things for myself when somehow it was maybe initially put in my head that it wasn't for myself. So I'm confused about yeah. If this why was I like how to treat things. yourself at home would be like that so would be better. Nice. Yes, but also this is why bitches burn their bras after this. Like things yeah, went crazy in the right. 1960s. People went nuts. They're like fucking everyone growing their armpit hair out. Like yeah, they rebelled. Don't worry, we, Good we took care of it. Good you don't call. have to be triggered by this. Thank you. But I do want to do this for myself. Oh my God, Carlos is trying to cancel himself. <laughs> uh, you know what? This actually, they're not wrong about this because I have put my bare pussy on Bobby's face <laughs> while he plays Warzone and he is not <laughs> like, and he just will not flinch. He's just like, he'll just move his head to the right of my pussy. <laughs> have you ever dated the guy, the guy that I like, I always felt was gay that I dated in college who was married to a woman and has kids, but I'm like, gay men would like reach out to touch him and I was always like, not yet. <laughs> He, if that was a mirror, that would have been him. He's just wait, like, wait, wait a second, Annie. You guessed another guy was gay, but you were wrong. And he, and- it's I'm not wrong. He's definitely gay. But <laughs> every gay man approached him, wanted him, everything. He made a choice to repress that and have children and okay, <laughs> and live a comfortable life. But <laughs> a choice. Happy Pride. Yeah. Happy Pride. And Happy Pride to you, sir. Pray the gay away. <laughs> 
Um, Do you know they still have those camps, the pray the gay away camps? Oh yeah, how Jesus dark. camps are real. But I mean, I guess Roe versus Wade's getting overturned. So yeah. what, we, what is anything? <laughs> We're gonna start having to do the, the 1950s wife. But don't you think that is something that might come back into style? Conversion what? therapy? No, oh. no, that yeah. does exist. Yeah, I know. It still so, does. Yeah. Why'd you get quiet? Like, I know, I mean, I heard about it. No, I, I wasn't trying to like make a joke about it. I thought you were saying it would come back into style is all. No, but I'm just saying, what if like the 1950s like housewife would come back into style? I feel like there's women out there betraying all of us who are doing this. Yeah, but wouldn't My it be mom, nice to know how to cook though? It would be like, I <laughs> like it is just like a skill set for survival. No, you know what the, our challenge is? We should all be our own 1950s housewife. Yeah. Let's mm. fucking do that for ourselves. Well, well that's, that's what, what I've been saying. literally thinking in my head. I want to do that. Like I want to become, I don't want to. <sighs> no, that's the Trash so. Tuesday 1950s here's, housewife challenge. Here's what I'll say, guys. Like the whole cooking thing, I'm an advocate for people learning how to cook. Yeah. Only because like, I find joy in cooking for myself and obviously dark times ahead. Just Same in an money. apocalyptic yeah. world, let's just know how to throw a fish on a yeah. grill or something like that. And no I wonder if these jokes are gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, don't kill me. <laughs> always, there's always been a jester throughout history. So you guys are good. Hey. Um, I, yeah, no, but I, for me, I think one of the reasons I don't like to cook just because my mom did cook, but she didn't seem to like enjoy it. Like it wasn't something that I looked at, but her mom enjoyed it. So I think that's how she learned. But I think like um, because I have ADD, I don't even want to label myself with ADD anymore because I do think I can transcend it. But um, time management and stuff has always in the past been like a problem for me. And so I think it's just it's daunting to have to be timing different things and stuff. It's like a little bit. I think that's the reason why I'm not a good I don't bake and I don't enjoy baking because it's very mathematical and very precise and it involves a type of specificity that I don't enjoy like when i cook i like to eyeball things i like yeah. to look at what's in my fridge and throw it all together and see like what i come up with and if you have a weird thing about time do one pot recipes yeah just throw stuff into a pot and you don't even have to think about time you just kind of have to look and be like oh and then taste is it ready is it not like yeah. trust your instinct like i like that better because i think another thing is i'm like anti-authority and so yeah. it's like i don't like the recipe i'm like why are you fucking telling me what to do exactly. and then i'm like i have to go to the store and be like oh i gotta go down this aisle and I got to get like I always five think, turnips. And I think recipes turnips. are just for me like loose suggestions. Yeah. I look at a recipe. I look at the ingredients. I always switch things around. And I think that uh, the chef Roy Choi teaches a master class on how to like cook from your heart yeah. rather than like from very specific recipes. And I think that that's where the joy of cooking comes from. I do love like I love watching Top Chef. It's like one of my favorite shows. And I love seeing where you, you can see because I don't think they're are they allowed to have recipes on there? Um, I'm not sure. I don't watch Top Chef. I think like I think they have to just kind of like know what they're doing already. But you're so creative, both of you are so creative. I just imagine you guys like having fun. I've had with... some creative things she They baked. can't have recipes. That's the point of the yeah. show. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. That's the whole point of the show. I've watched every season of <laughs> <laughs> the whole through line of the show. <laughs> it's what makes the show different. But you, <laughs> you know what I realized that I do, especially with reality TV that I really like and maybe all shows, I have to pay attention so I can rewatch it and feel the joy of mm. rewatching it again without really remembering what happens. Like I've watched every season of Survivor three times. I have a show pitch for you. <laughs> I think that it will, it changed me in Bobby's life is the the Great British Bake Off. I find it so boring. I think Dave Wait, watches that. It's to me the does. most wholesome, <laughs> feel good show that I've ever watched. I don't know why I couldn't, I just was like, and Todd will make fun of, Todd's funny. You know, I really get so bored when I'm watching something. I. And Dave likes it quiet in the room. I like it's to- not gonna happen. Hold on, like, go back to the 1950s. No, if you're, going, <laughs> if you're going to a movie with me, you're getting, uh, you Two cannot movies. complain. You're getting, you're getting the <laughs> fucking Mystery Science Theater joke track with it, okay? See, I would see movies with you because that's what, I need a couple forms of stimulation. Like I wanna chit chat, like I wanna comment. It's too boring. During a movie, I'm either talking and making jokes or asleep. I'm okay <laughs> with that. By the way, in the movies, just a little cross talk is yeah. hilarious. My dad, my mom sat between me and my dad during when we went and saw Brokeback Mountain because she knew we were gonna talk, but we just leaned over her and made jokes the whole time. I yeah. love doing that. The, the one thing that bothers me in movies though, Jenna did this one thing, it drove me fucking <laughs> crazy. Carlos is already laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't talking, but the brights on her phone, she was oh. texting. And like every, 
And it was a movie that I had already watched and I really wanted her to watch. She'd be like, this is the good part. And I could see her kind she of- She cannot watch You can't she ever can't go, you can't ever want someone to want to I think like that's the problem. I do that with songs. I'll be like, listen to that. And people just want nothing to do yeah, with Yeah, that's you. your problem for thinking Jenna would watch a movie with you. But also the phone light, I could see it in like my periphery and I was just graduate. I'm like, oh, I can't fucking <laughs> watch a fucking movie, you know? But also it was distracting me. Yeah, here's what I don't, I've never understood. Why is a date seeing a movie you're not fucking talking to each other oh, yeah. it's the worst date ever so also, you can get fingered I, I, only, if you wear pants to a date night right. out at a movie you're a fucking bitch you're exactly okay? right so you're it's only bitch. it's only the correct date if you're younger and have no other place where to you be can kind of alone in the dark like, intimate oh. in the dark you want to sit in the back but you want to make out that's what you hold hands for. it's it's like it's a good place to like make your move you know it's like so exciting you're like watching the movie but you're like you know? yeah <laughs> Controversial, I do not break bread on a first date. I uh, Eating is such a joy for mm. me. I do not want a new person oh, judging totally. how the fuck I'm eating. And I will never have, go to dinner. Like dinner and a movie, fuck, that's like the worst. Yeah, I, me and Dave's first date was, well, I don't know if I've told this on here, but he asked to come to one of my shows. Right. And when we walked in, I saw I was already so hesitant, but then I saw it was a very light crowd and I was like, um, you know what? I'm not going to go up tonight. And so so smart. Esther. I know I really called an audible and it was the right call. And then we went next door to it, I think it was Coffee Bean. Now it's a Starbucks, but um, we went to Coffee Bean and we just had like a green tea and we just sat and chatted. And that was perfect. Sip a tea, have a public place to sit and chat. Love that. Yeah. And not alcohol. I think I know which one you're talking about, though. It's like a nasty. That. Oh, yeah, that coffee bean. It's like a gross coffee bean. But we sat outside. Yeah. Also, another thing that people do on first dates, which I don't recommend because I've, is hiking. Because not only are you oh, hopping and pumping. Oh, my pussy smells like shit by the but end. Also, it's like Annie, wafting I've had here. a terrible get, hike date. I, I get the... the <laughs> what, do you try to push you? <laughs> <laughs> you get the little crust, the, the white stickies on the side of your mouth because you're dehydrated and now you're talking. And you don't, you never bring enough water. Now you're like sharing this one water bottle. Like, don't drink too well, much. No, I've done the mistake where like I tried to eat less that day so I would feel skinny for the date. But then you're on a hike and like... <laughs> you're dizzy. I'm basically near passing out <laughs> like so i'm not functioning it was horrible i'm i've never been more confused <laughs> i've never felt more confused it's a little bit of both the things you like i love chest hair so. oh yeah i like these i have the um did she just post that yeah oh i gotta post mine from when i was kylie like, just posted that 35 minutes ago yes Holy i get to shit. repost that look we why are we psychic people that's the same brand as this probably she really just took boardwalk humor and ran with it. Yeah. Right? She stole my boardwalk humor. You know, that's yeah. my LLC. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Don't be insecure. Don't worry about nothing. Why'd you be point happy. at me? I am insecure. Don't be insecure. <laughs> be cool like me. Uh, this is a great episode. I had so much fun. Thanks for coming to Baywatch with us. See you next week. See Thanks you for Baywatching us. Subscribe. Subscribe. We got to get to 200. I've already threatened to be gone off this earth. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.